have a look at how to edit a file uh, and most importantly edit the story settings to understand how to interact with a, a mesh and a, a site in a sectional understanding so that we could in terms of a feasibility start planning out a site and understand its heights. So firstly let's have a look at what story settings are. This is our stories. We see that currently we have an AHD terrain, lower ground floor, upper ground floor, highlights and roof. This is um, not important and this isn't necessarily standard. This is just based on what I'd previously set up for this. To go into the story settings we have to right click story settings. Now what are the story settings? This is a 3D model and it's set up based on a, a terrain mesh. I'm going to get out of this for a second. I'll just explain this first and then I'll show you what I'm referring to. Um, the AHD is Australian height datum. So this is survey information on this story. The terrain is the mesh, which is this big black box here. And this is our earth. Then everything above that is effectively a division of height. And so this allows us to put different plans or different levels or stories on different slices of our model. And we can view them independently or we can view them together. So let's just press OK for now. We're going to go down to, and look at each of these stories to understand what's on here. So on AHD, I've only got my site survey information. When we zoom in, we see that we've got numbers like 221. What does that mean? That's 221 meters above sea level. So we know that this is a fairly high site. This is up in the Blue Mountains, uh, west of Sydney. And so we've got quite a lot of height on this particular site. And as we can see with these topography levels, it's a relatively steep site as well. It's definitely not flat. So in order to build our model, what I've done here is to create a mesh. This mesh is built in Archicad using the mesh tool and please excuse this other information around here that looks a bit messy. This is just um, a diagram. Let's get rid of that to make a bit more sense of it. So this is our mesh and these are additional meshes or one additional mesh that I've placed around the outside just to show the context. So this isn't as um, accurate, this is more just for shadow casting. And this one here is our actual site. Now if I want to clean this up, because we see it's currently cut into triangles, if I want to clean that up I can make all ridges smooth and when I go into that in 3D we see that, um, I'll just turn that viewing plane off, editing plane. We can see that those lines now represent those topography lines. And so it's a lot smoother. So that's our site. And then above that, in terms of our stories, this is drawn information. So at the moment, this is just a fill and a spline line, again, showing those topography lines. This is just a copy of that information. There's nothing on this story, and there's nothing on this story. So it's waiting for information. Uh, we're currently using this as a design project for a multi-res project, and so we're wanting to understand this site. This is the street. Our access is down here. And so we're going to be entering the site from the southern end. And so we need to understand what that means in terms of maybe basement parking and then levels above that. So let's start to edit these story settings a little bit more. And to do that, we first need to go all the way down to our AHD and understand what is this bottom level here. So the bottom level of the site is somewhere below 220 meters. And in terms of accessing off the site, we've got 221 222. So we're going to set the bottom story at 221 meters. So to do that, what do I do? Again, I can right click on the stories or right click on any of the stories, story settings, and I've currently got my lower ground floor set at 223. I'm going to change that to 221, just as discussed. 
And I'm not going to adjust the elevations. I'm not going to touch those. That will tend to muck up my drawing. I'm going to start from the bottom and I'm going to work my way up. And I'm just going to set these as three meters height to next. So each story will be three meters floor to floor. Now again, where am I getting this information from? I'm just putting in numbers. Three meters is roughly a good size for a floor to floor height. In some cases that's too low, in some cases that's too high. In terms of a design exercise, it's just Goldilocks, just right. We just want something that's gonna be simple to allow us to get started with drawing. Uh, now we need a few more stories. So let's go back into those story settings. Why did I get out? Just so, so you could show the process. Lower ground floor, upper ground floor, maybe that's right. We could call this first one basement. Now the name doesn't really matter, it's really just to help us identify it. Basement. And I'm not going to call lower ground and upper ground, that's going to be confusing as well. So we'll just have lower ground and, sorry, ground, then first, insert above, second, insert above. I'll put a third, I have no idea if we can get a third on this story, on this project, but let's just do that for now and we're gonna see if it works. So we've got three meters on all of these. Now I'm gonna go down to basement. We can see that I've got my side information here, so that's helpful. I'm gonna get a slab tool, go into the slab settings, and I'm gonna make sure that this is set at zero. Now, when I draw, draw a slab, I can do it in two different ways, with the reference plane on the top or reference plane on the bottom. If I was drawing a slab, generally, I want my reference plane on the top, which means the depth of the slab goes down. If I'm drawing something else with a slab, because of course a slab doesn't need to be a slab, it could be anything flat, I could be drawing a coffee table, I could be drawing a kitchen bench, I could be drawing a wardrobe, I could use my reference plane as the bottom and then extruding up. So we're going to use this option. The, um, the surface settings don't really matter, but what I'll do just to make it really clear is just use a red slab. Now, how big do I want this to be? I'm just going to use this box, this red box to define this line, because this is what we've got as our um, site setback or boundary setback. Click. It's currently got a green fill, which is a bit strange. I'm gonna go into that and just change that. So instead of being green, I'll just make that gray. So it makes a bit more sense as a slab. So we've got one slab. Now I'm not gonna redraw it on every uh, story. That'd be silly. So I'll copy this, edit, copy, and then I'm gonna paste it on every story. So up to ground, paste, control V or edit, paste. First, control V. Second, control V. Third, control V. And just because I can, roof, control V. Now, we can't see all of those all at one time in our floor plan, so we either need to change to our section or to our 3D view. Right click, show all in 3D to understand what we've done. So, this is giving us an idea of what it would look like if we had ground, sorry, basement, ground, first, second, third, and roof. So it's really making it a very tall sort of building on this site. Now, in 3D, that's helpful to see, but it doesn't really tell us important information. Instead, I'm gonna double click on my section, just to explain where I'm referring to. This is my section here, so it's cutting through the middle of this site and through the middle of this slab. So when I go to my section, I can see all of those here. Now, the one that's missing is this one here. Let's zoom in a bit more. That one there. That is my basement. So we can see that this is partially underground at the top of the site, but it's just above natural ground at the bottom of the site. And that's what we want so that we can ensure that stormwater flows off. We can see that the next one up is mostly above natural ground, but it's slightly in the ground towards the top of the site. And then even the next one above that is realistically around about at street level. So in reality, we've got two whole stories below street level. So that's giving us a really good idea of how we might use this site. And so it's again useful 
as a design exercise, I, I always say you can't really design in Archicad or I would not recommend designing in Archicad, but understanding this in terms of um, using it to determine our site data is very, very useful. Now I'm going to draw one line. It's not going to be exactly the same as the site, but it's close enough for this. One line from, from the bottom to the top of the site, we see again there's a bit of deviation. It's not following the contours. I could have used a better line if I wanted to, but that's fine for now. And I'm not going to use an offset tool because that would offset it perpendicular. I want to drag a copy. So right click, move, drag a copy. And I'm going to drag this up 9 meters. Why 9 meters? Because that is the maximum allowable building height envelope for this site. So let's just finish that off by drawing a few more lines. Click, click. And this is showing us that we can have the basement, all of our ground floor, all of our first floor, and about 30 or 40 percent of our second floor fitting on the site. We, we effectively can't have any of the top story uh, fitting inside our building height envelope. So I could straight away go into my story settings and realize, okay, the third floor is just not possible. Delete the story. That's going to update that information. Press OK. Delete anyway. And we see that that's automatically going to adjust that for us. Now I could also go to my roof story and shorten that particular slab. I'm just going to guess for now, just because I want it to be fast. Let's just reduce it to about here. Go back into my site section. Yep, that was a pretty good guess. And that's roughly on our building height envelope. So very quickly, using a little bit of site data, a little bit of Archicad tools, we can get an idea of how this could work. Now we're going to do one more thing that's a bit cool. We're going to use the solid element operation tool. So we'll select our slab design solid element operation. This becomes our operator, our slab sorry, our, our mesh becomes our target. I want subtract with upwards extrusion, execute. And what that's going to show, again, just as a diagram, if we were to cut out the basement, this red line is roughly indicating our natural ground and we're getting a really good understanding of what we could use in terms of usable space on this site. Now, if we go back to our layout where we started, then this drawing is going to update. I'm just going to stretch this down just so we can see all of that information. And now, uh, in terms of, again, a design exercise, we could print this off at scale and then use that to trace over with our butter paper so we can start to design not only in floor plan using our site diagram, but we can also design in section. And that's really the best way to design, designing with both of those orientations, both, both of those views at the same time. That's the end of this video.